Hi, I'm Jason. Welcome to episode of Cigars and. Today is February 17th. Important day because today one of the greatest men I've ever known went home to be at the Lord. In honor of that man, I'm going to smoke one of his favorite cigars. Made by Lito Gomez, the La Flor Dominicana. Now this is not the double Ligero chiseled. This is the Oro. The unique thing about this cigar is it's chiseled. Lito Gomez was the first one to do this. Um, you don't punch it or cut it. To open it up, all you do is grab the ends just like this and pinch. And it opens up. And I'm drinking from a cup. A very special cup in 2007. He's nominated for Nobel, P Nobel Peace Prize. One of the greatest men I ever knew. One of my personal heroes. I believe it's important that we have personal heroes, it's people we can look up to, people we can aspire to be. I fell in love with uh, Lito Gomez cigars before I found out that Rush loved them. Uh, because most of them are very strong cigars. Full body, full flavor. Uh, the chiseled was just a, a niche thing that Lito Gomez did. But they are really amazing sticks. <coughs> If you can't handle a strong cigar, I would not recommend trying one. If you were to smoke a double Aguero chiseled or a double Aguero, I'd recommend doing it after a full dinner, like a steak dinner, full, you know, just have a full belly. Don't smoke on an empty belly. Uh, it's not a morning stick by any means. So Rush Limbaugh was one of my personal heroes. I say the grace man. One of the greatest men I knew. I say I knew him because I listened to him on the radio and watched him on TV. I've read his books. I know people say, well, you don't really know the man. No, you do. When I started listening to Rush in 1991, uh, I was in school, but once I got out of school, I would catch the end of the radio broadcast. And during summertime, I'd always listen to the radio broadcast. I remember my senior year of high school, uh, I took OJT, on-job training, which meant I got out of school around 1230. Well, <laughs> it was funny. I got out of school at 1230, but my last period ended at 12 o'clock, and then I had lunch from 12 to 1230. So I was supposed to wait till the end of lunch and leave. The resource deputy at the time looked at me and goes, Zalva, why are you still here? I'm like, yeah, you're right, I should go. So around 12.15, I would jump in my beautiful 78 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. To, to this day, that Coupe de Ville is the best car I ever owned. Get home just in time to tune in to Rush Limbaugh's TV program. He only did it a few years, uh, if that. Uh, and I know why. He didn't like television. Television had to be scripted. He had to put makeup on. Uh, and he didn't like that. He didn't want to have to wear makeup. And he didn't like scripts. He was a radio guy. He would get on the radio and talk for three hours. Like I said, I started listening to him in 1991. And... 
it, it was amazing listening to a man speak with such boldness and such knowledge. But it wasn't just that he had knowledge. He taught me how to think. You see, even when I was in high school, teachers still taught a liberal agenda. Uh, yeah, I remember junior high learning about the environmentalism and global warming at the time, I think it was. Before they just called it climate change. And I started to believe this stuff they were teaching. And then I started listening to Rush and started hearing the truth. My perspective changed. He opened my eyes. And I realized that, no, I didn't have to believe what my teachers were teaching me because they had an agenda. Not all of them. I had some really good teachers in school. Uh, this was a long time ago. But Rush taught me how to think. He taught me how to think critically. He taught me how to understand the conservative point of view and why conservatism works, true conservatism works. He taught me the importance of making sure you vote. These are things which a young man needs to hear especially in his teenage years. But more than that, Rush changed AM radio. Rush essentially saved AM radio. You know, AM radio was at the time before Rush was dying out. FM was a new thing. And when Rush came on, it inspired an entire generation of broadcasters. And you're going to hear many people talk about it through the next days, weeks, but people like Sean Hannity, Mark Levin, and many others would not be where they are without Rush. He made talk radio. Why do you think the left is always trying to shut down talk radio? Because talk radio is where the conservatives go to. That's where people learn. I've heard many people call into Russia so and talk about how he changed their life. They were liberal until they started listening to him. I think he said you had to give him eight weeks. Maybe it was a, few, maybe it was a little less. Maybe what eight weeks? Maybe it was more like uh, three weeks or something. But you had to listen to him for a little, for that short time period, before you made judgment about him, because it's true. People would hear sound bites and just automatically think he's a mean person. Uh, recently, I had a friend, a coworker, tell me he was a racist. That Rush Limbaugh is a racist. I was like. Really? Well, at that point, you might as well be calling me a racist because who I am is because of Rush. I am the man I am today because of Rush Limbaugh. Now, you may look at that and say, well, obviously, I don't like you, Jason. Well, okay. Guess I didn't get good light. That's unusual. If you don't like Rush Limbaugh, or if you hate Rush Limbaugh, you might as well hate me too. No, seriously. If, if you can say that you hate Rush Limbaugh because of his political views or what he says, then you might as well hate me too. Because I am the man I am today because of him. He helped shape my character. You know, I say there's three, the three most important men in my life that have influenced my life and created the man I am today would be Jesus first, naturally. 
my father second, and third Rush Limbaugh. He would always say, talent on loan from God. That is very humbling, and I loved hearing that. Why? Because, yes, people would call him braggadocious, but he really wasn't. When he would say, talent on loan from God, he was saying that talent's not his. It was given to him by God. And Rush did not talk a lot about his faith. He did not. I, occasionally... He would talk about his faith in Christ. He would talk about how he just doesn't believe there's evidence for evolution. He believes what the Bible says. But he didn't talk about religion because that wasn't his thing. He wasn't an expert in it. Uh, his thing was politics. His thing was conservatism. I had a, a very good friend who was a Democrat and I worked for him. Wonderful man, his wife was wonderful, they're Democrats. But we, every time we'd get in the truck to go somewhere, he'd start the truck and uh, the talk radio was on and Rush was on. He's like, oh, how'd that get on there? He would change the channel. I just laugh. I'm like, uh huh, okay, yeah, you like it. No, I can't stand that guy. And he would change the channel. Even people that didn't, they said they didn't like him, they enjoyed listening to him. But he was always upbeat. He was always positive. Even when things were down the dumps in the, the country, he was positive. And every now and then you'd hear him lose his cool and he'd have to sign off on a commercial break. I remember one time, I called her, got him so mad, he just slammed down the slammed down table and walked out. And Bo Snurdly gets on the radio and goes, <laughs> um, this is uh, Bo Snurdly, uh, we have to go commercial break. <laughs> and that was like one of the first times I ever heard Bo Snurdly speak. Because the joke was, was Bo Snurdly even a real person? Because you never saw him, you never really heard him. But Rush talked about him and would talk to him in the background, but you never heard him. And then you heard Bo Snurdly speak, you're like, oh, I guess he is a real person. <laughs> but when he was diagnosed, well, let me back up. I remember back when I was in the Coast Guard in Maine, I remember the show was getting kind of weird because people would ask questions and he would pause. It'd be a long pause and he'd answer. And then finally one day I was pulling my driveway to so I have to tell you all something. And he talked about his hearing loss. And how he's almost completely deaf. And that's why everyone that they were transcribing everything to him. And it was nice because you never heard anything about Rush from the media. You always heard from Rush first. As well it should be. And I had so much respect for the man. He didn't do interviews. Very rarely did he do interviews. And the reason why was because people did interviews would cut the interviews up and make them make you say what they want you to say versus what you actually said. So he had actually he did actually have I believe a a, a contract. So if he did do an interview, uh, his people would record the entire thing in its entirety. So if he needed to, he could release the whole thing and basically um, sue the people for a misrepresent misrepresentation, if you will. But he had one guy on staff, I can't remember his name, I don't know if he ever gave his name, but his only job was to tell people no. People would call, ask for donations, people would call, ask for interviews, and all he did was answer phones saying no, no, no. Um, Rush was actually a very private person. Very loud on the radio, very boisterous. Um, but he was in his private life, was a very private person. Um, but what a man. I, You know, when I say he's one of my personal heroes, he was a man that I would want to spend the afternoon with getting just to know personally even better. I do feel like I did know him personally because 
I listened to him since 1991. That's a long time. Over 25 years I've listened to Rush on the radio. That, that's a long time. I, I've read his, his two books he wrote, The Way Things Ought to Be and See I Told You So. Right now my wife is, has an entire Rush Revere series she's reading to her children. Our children are learning more about U.S. history from those books, from a, a, a fictional perspective with real history, and are enjoying it than they are from what is required to be taught to them. That's a real blessing. To take history and make it fun. And Rush could always do that. He could uh, tell a story. I, I never really cared about golf, but if Rush talked about golf, it was interesting. I never really cared about football, but if Rush talked about football, it was interesting. It, and the people he'd have guest hosts on the show, you could tell it was such an honor for him. And he picked really good guest hosts. And it wasn't like when, oh, there's guest hosts, I'm going to tune out. No, you want to listen. Because they did a good job. By the way, this cigar, the uh, Florida Minicana Oro, is very smooth. It's uh, full-bodied, but um, not super strong. It's actually, I would say, more on the medium, but incredible complexity of flavors. In this life... It's short. You have to choose your heroes wisely. Rush, like anyone, uh, had obstacles between his uh, uh, hearing loss. Uh, he actually had a, uh, a pill addiction uh, from the pain he had in his uh, back, I believe. And he got addicted to uh, pain medication. He, he never used any illegal narcotics, but he got addicted to pain medication, which I have known many people in my personal life who have gotten addicted to pain medication. It's very easy to do. Uh, that's why I've been very scared to take pain medications, because people can get addicted to them. It happens. Did that make me stop listening to Rush? No. Did it make me lose respect for Rush? No, I actually gained more respect for him. Why? Because he publicly came out and said, yes, I am addicted to pain pills. And I have to pay the piper. And he had to, um, you know, he was charged and he paid fines. And yeah, he did what he had to do. But he got off the pain medication and it didn't keep him down. And last year he's diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And when I heard that, it just it broke my heart. It really did. And today, listen on the radio. Every time the radio comes on, you're like, okay. In, in the past few months, there's been a series of guest hosts because Rush is going over treatments. Uh, he'd have a treatment week. And you know there's guest hosts. And usually he'd make it back the following week, but not always, maybe just for a couple days. And every time the radio show would come on, you'd hear music, and you'd hear now guest hosting, like, ah, not Rush. And then you'd the day you'd hear Rush, you'd just get excited. And you're just like, wow, it's so good to hear his voice. And there's certain days he would come on, just, man, I need, I need to hear him, especially with the things going on with this whole past election. You just need that comfort, hearing his voice. It, it comforted you to know that America's anchor man, Maha Rushi, was there for us. And he would. He would lift you up. He would make you feel confident. He loved this country. He loved our troops. He loved law enforcement. He loved what was right. 
and he used to say he knew these liberal Democrats like every inch of his glorious naked body. <laughs> and and the, the one thing I, I learned very much, I, I learned from Rush was liberals don't think they feel. They don't think logically, they feel. They act upon their emotions. Their emotions is what drives them. Their policies are based on emotions and or lies, such as environmental policies, um, just like the Paris Climate Accord. It's all based on emotions. And Rush taught me that you have to think critically, you have to think logically about things. That's important. You know, you hear Ben Shapiro say, facts don't care about your feelings. It's true. Facts don't care about your feelings. Today, America lost a great man. The EIB network will continue. That I'm sure of. And talk radio will continue because of what Rush Limbaugh did for talk radio and AM. It will continue on. It's a real blessing. What's the takeaway from this? What can you learn from this video? Maybe you hate me because I love Rush. That's fine. Maybe you think I'm crazy because I love Rush. That's fine too. Maybe you will defriend me on Facebook. That's fine. Maybe you'll give this video a thumbs down. Eh, that's fine too. I don't care. But Rush Limbaugh was a national treasure. He had the number one radio talk show radio talk show in the country. Hands down. No one even came close to him. Not even Howard Stern when he was in his heyday did he come ever close to Rush Limbaugh. No one did. Why? Because Rush Limbaugh spoke to the American people about what mattered. True conservatism. What most people are like. What most people thrive to be. People don't want the government to give them a handout. People want the government to leave them alone. Ronald Reagan once said, the scariest words you can ever hear is, hi, we're from the government, we're here to help. <laughs> Ronald Reagan also said that the government should fear the people. When the people, when the government's no longer feared by the people, then we're in trouble. You see, years ago, when uh, my family's from Cuban de Cuban descent, when during the uh, when Castro was at the peak of power. And during the whole Bay of Pigs thing, when they thought they were going to invade the United States. See, Castro wasn't afraid of President Kennedy. Now, I'm not speaking bad against, uh, uh, against President Kennedy. He took us to the moon. He was the last Democratic president to do a tax cut. All right? I'm not speaking ill of President Kennedy. Um, you know, I think he was, his life was snuffed out way too young. He was a, everything I've read about and know about him, he was a pretty good president. But Castro wasn't scared of him. From what I've heard, the only reason why Castro did not invade Florida is because he knew every Floridian was armed. And you cannot take a state or a country when there's a gun behind every door. Castro understood that. He feared the people. The government should fear the people. People should never fear the government. One reason is because government is made up by the people and for the people. People working in your local 
state and federal government should be your brothers, your sisters, your parents, your aunts, your uncles, your nieces, your nephews, your children. Those should be the people in government powers. They should always remember where they came from and remember who they work for. See, Rush Limbaugh understood that. He under, understood what being American was all about. A freedom-loving American. You know, people... I actually had a military buddy said, what does he know about the military? He didn't serve. No, you're right, he didn't serve. But he served this country. He served this country by being on the radio for over 30 years, for three hours a day. And, and he didn't take long vacations. I, I heard Sean Handy today say he didn't have a bucket list of things he would do. He was given a, a time frame. He said, you had six months to live. Well, he lived a full year, a stage four cancer. He didn't go and do all the fun things that most of us would probably want to do before we died. See the places he wants to see. No. You know what he did? He did everything he could do to get back on the radio to talk to me, to you, to the American people. It wasn't just a job to him. It was his passion. That is a man I want to be like. I want to be like that man. When you look up to someone, yeah, that person's going to have flaws. That person isn't perfect. None of us are. We are all have we all have an endemic nature, a sin nature. We are not perfect. We are flawed creations. Because the Bible says through one man sin entered the world and through sin entered death. That was Adam. When Adam sinned, we all sin. We're in this flesh. But we can be made perfect when we have Christ in us. We won't be perfect on this earth. But when we die, if you repent and put your trust in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you will be saved. And then you will have eternal life in heaven with the Lord. If you don't, you will burn in hell. That's not my words. That's what the Bible says. I know Rush Limbaugh's in heaven. He had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He didn't talk about it much. But he did talk about it. And I know he's in heaven. And I know when I die, I will be able to meet with him and some of my other heroes that I have that are in heaven as well. So today as I smoke this La Flor Dominicana, remember the great Maha Rushi, the man who changed my life, who made me the man I am today. And I still strive to be that man, to be a great man like him. I know that when I die, I'll be able to finally shake his hand in person on the other side of the veil. I can wait. Jason, this is episode of Cigars and my personal hero, Rush Limbaugh. God bless you, brother.